Hello. Were you mind blown by that trick? That image just shrunk. Look at that. Whoa. That was incredible. I know you guys thoroughly enjoyed it. It went from like big screen to little screen and then it vanished. Thank you guys for being with us today. Happy Valentine's Day to my wife. If you guys are wondering, I hate marketing days, by the way. To me, marketing days are days that someone, um, some kind of marketing pushes around it. Like, so yesterday I was at the store, I had to buy some stuff for my wife, you know. We're newly married, so it's, uh, I had to make sure that I was there. Uh, and gave her something this year as, you know, Valentine's Day. And things are like tripled, quadrupled. Of course, she's worth it. But marketing days are things where there's like sales, but they're not really sales or things are really expensive. I hate that crap. Or like on Thanksgiving when people are only thankful for one day of the year. Come on, folks. Be thankful every day of the year. Yo, what's up? It is 1027 in the AM on the East Coast. It's your homeboy, Zach Miller, episode three of Zach Miller Live. And we are going to talk actually today about a question that came from yesterday with Stanley Sparrow. I gave him homework. So if he pops up on this, we're going to make sure that he did his homework. But Stanley asked a simple question. What's the best way to reach new customers? If you guys are watching, which... I know you are, and I appreciate it. Would love to know your answer, where you think the best place or the best way to reach, excuse me, new customers is. We got Shay and Matt and Jared and James and Renee. Ray, you love tuning into the show. Appreciate that. Dave Ritt, get back to work, my friend. <laughs> John Fuller, ooh, Kickstarter coming up soon. Did you guys see that preview on the Hatch Facebook page? Woo! I also just saw their Kickstarter video. Woo! It's going to give you chills. I'm excited today. I don't even know why I'm like this pumped up. But that means you guys get a super energetic Zach. Aaron and Jennifer, thanks for being with us today. Jared says, and again, is that, am I saying your name right? I keep, I, I hope I am. He says paid social media ads. Hmm. I think that is okay. But my favorite place to find customers is where they want to be found. Right? Where are customers looking for help? Kathy, what's going on? Hope you're doing well. Derek, thanks for the love. And Dave, again, get back to work. Look, I, I think this question is very simple. The answer to this question is very simple. You should, Jerrod, got it, Jerrod. I think this question, while a lot of people are wondering, you know, it's like, look for where people are asking questions. Look for where people are struggling or complaining about something or are looking for answers, right? There's a lot of places where you can find this, right? There's Quora, there's subreddits on reddit there's facebook right here right i am talking to you what's up kenya i am jared so oh, that's right i am talking to you you guys are asking questions you guys are consuming information so it seems like you know this is a good place for me to be talking and communicating with people who have questions helping them right Think about this. It's not, we overthink this way too much. It could be on Twitter or LinkedIn, wherever people who you believe are your target customers are looking for answers. That's where you should go and give them answers and literally double down, triple down, give them the marketing day effect. So it's like three or four times the amount of effort for, from you, you know, three or four times the amount of content from you, just like three or four times the amount of price for the flowers that I bought. I'm kidding, obviously. But look, where are your customers? Let's say you have built a dog toy, right? Where are your customers, right? Of course they are, um, of course they are brain fart 
of course they're at places where they can buy dog food like a pet smart or petco or they're at dog parks or hospitals or the vet <laughs> what if you could create relationships with people there hey heather hey jessica hope you guys are doing awesome i know you are but think about it. we overthink this process way too much literally because the internet is everywhere now and people are consuming information everywhere you can find people that are communicating over and over and over again and looking for help in these places so your homework for today is actually quite simple what i want you guys to do see you jared what i want you guys to do is think about where your customers hang out where your target customers hang out where the people that you want to be viewing what you're doing are think about that coffee this is a rotary cup where are the people who you believe want to consume what you have hanging out then make sure that you are providing them value by answering their questions all right think about it. My good friend, Steven Reinstein, who is now traveling, I believe, out of the country, safe travels, created a, his car, his target customer is Martial Arts Studios. And he, about this time last year, was what I call a nobody, zero relationships. So he created a Facebook group and he attended some other Facebook groups. And saw that a lot of people were asking kind of how do i grow my dojo or martial arts studios and so he began to create content around the questions that he saw other people asking he also went into these facebook groups which he was not the moderator or the admin in. and look it could be any type of group for this matter it could be a twitter chat it could be a linkedin group it could be like i'm saying here a facebook group so he looked and saw that people were asking questions but the moderators and admins weren't really providing the value there so he created his own channel his own group on facebook and now has several thousand clients several thousand members from this and has been able to really take this and turn it into a business and so people are looking for help if you aren't giving it to them if you're just like oh i have this great thing they're going to come to me you know what's going to happen we're going to do it again. Zero is going to happen. Zero. Why? Because you have to be proactive. You've got to be the anomaly in this situation, right? You've got to be the person who is reaching out and, be, and being the expert or the authority that people are looking for. People, if you provide answers to people, people are going to start looking at you, right? On Reddit, they have something called karma. So, the amount of karma points that you get, and if you guys haven't checked out Reddit, it's a really cool tool. It also indexes so people can search for something and find it over and over again. Unlike this Facebook post where you'd have to scroll through for days and a year to find this specific video because it's gonna be harder to find. But so Reddit, they're broken up into different subreddits. They also have moderators just like a Facebook group would and people are asking questions so if you run a business let's say you're on a small business there's like 400,000 people in the subreddit small business to find this all you have to do is go to reddit and search small business and you'll see that i don't know 150 different questions a day are asked about this let me you know what let's just roll right into there because i believe that i can show you exactly it stand by all right let's see how this works because i've never done this feature before here we go hold on okay i think you guys can see it this is it this is reddit right so let's see all of these questions are under small business. Uh, this is the one I want, small business, right? Okay. Okay, there's only 100,000 people there. 
it's still a lot of people. Why is this good? Why is this good for you? Because look at all of these questions. Maybe you're a lawyer, LLC to S Corp. Have any of you guys made the switch? Maybe you're a lawyer. You can go in there and say, hey, let me give you this answer, provide value to someone, and then reach out to them in the DMs or figure out what who they are and say, hey, I think I can help you. I mean, think about how powerful that is. Small business owners that have closed a business. When did you decide that enough was enough? Okay, 63 comments. Let's just look at what these people are saying. So I'm a small business owner. I bought my restaurant at 25 and now 34. I'm not going to read the rest. I'm going to assume that he's talking about being in trouble and he's looking for advice. Look at all of the answers, right? If you have gone through some of these challenges in this case, all you have to do is respond and give this person feedback and try and help them. Why is this important? Because the more value you can provide to people, the more likely they are to view you as an expert and you move them down the sales funnel and convert them into whatever you want them to be, a customer, a user, a friend, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whatever it is, the process is still the same over and over again. All right, so let's go back to small business. What else? What do you want from a marketing consultant? Okay, this has 10 comments, okay? And then also another thing, just giving you like a Reddit 101 here. So these little things right here are like likes. So I agree with this post. So I upvoted it. If I wanted to say something, I'd be like, yeah, this needs to be talked about more, right? And then I would post it. I'm not going to because I want to actually have the context of the story. But I mean, think about it. That's how you create relationships with people. Back to me. What's up, everyone? Thanks for joining us today for the third edition of Zach Miller Live. Hope you guys are enjoying it. If you guys have comments for me, feel free to ask in the comments below. If you think that this is valuable, feel free to somehow subscribe to getting notifications that I'm live every day. Somehow you can do that in this. I believe all you do is subscribe to me on Facebook. I don't know. Apparently, it's a thing that you can do. Andy Hilton, what is going on? Talk about a hustler, man. This guy is a huge, huge hustler. What I like about Andy, so he owns Recruit 757, I think Recruit 804, and UltimateRecruit.com. If those URLs are incorrect, I apologize. But his customer is football players, basketball players that are looking to go to college that don't normally be seen because there's a lot of people in the world that are looking for these recruits. So he created a basically database with videos and stats for colleges to view these potential recruits. He's been doing it for, gosh, I would think almost a decade at this point and recruit Nova. See, he's expanded so much, right? And so you, you've probably heard me say this before about keeping things small to start. Think about this. If, if Andy can't figure out how to do recruit in his backyard, he can't do and expand to the next city up, the next region up, and then, you know, ultimately, ultimate recruit, right? But he learned the process through all of this, built a reputation for himself just by providing value. He learned that both the families of these athletes and the colleges that are looking for these athletes don't have the manpower or the skills to get that information out there. He's now created athletes of the week. He also has done uh, some camps where other recruits come in. Look, if you want people to see you provide value to them, August Williams, what's going on? Thanks for the love. Appreciate it. Love seeing your stories as well. It doesn't matter if you own a business. If you want to be seen in the world with whatever you're doing, or if you are thinking about starting something, but you don't know what, look, what I would do to start is figure out what you love and create content around there where you feel comfortable. So I feel comfortable on video, at least here, right? In front of a lot of people, I'm terrified. I feel comfortable in video and I want to help people Become the anomaly. I want to help people be seen, get exposure, etc. And so I would create content 
around that. If you want to help brands be seen more through social media, you would create content around how those brands can get better. Well, Zach, I don't want to tell them my secret sauce. Well, folks, you're probably going to need to tell them your secret sauce because everyone else is. And honestly, if you tell them your secret sauce and you help them, then they're going to come to you and come to you over again. And then they'll probably hire you when they realize that you can help them be seen more by showing them their special sauce. I'm telling you my secret sauce right now. I'm making zero dollars off of this post right now. But if I build enough trust in other people, guess what happens? I could, you know, if I'm looking for a job, I could take this and get a job from it. I could get new employees from it because people will appreciate this. I could get new business off of this, or I could do something else that I'm not thinking of right now, right? And so the key is to provide value. And if you don't know what to do yet, again, start with what you love on a medium that you feel comfortable with. So if you like to write, go on Medium or get a blog uh, on like WordPress. If you like video, you know, pull out your camera. Mine has a huge crack in it. Ooh, look at that reflection. Ooh, the artist in me. Ooh, look at that. That's fancy. That could be an Instagram post. Ooh, I'm about the screen share of that. You know, pull out your phone, start doing videos. I think all too often people are terrified of, well, it's not going to be perfect. Who cares? You know what people are looking for? Answers, answers, and answers. And if you get enough value, provide enough value, you get enough followers, customers, guess what you're going to be able to do? Pay for better quality. If you're, if you're literally terrified of getting your message out there, find a medium that you feel comfortable with and just start pushing it out. If you don't know who to push it out to first, friends and family, just send it to them. They'll probably share it because they're friends and family. Christy Walker, love that secret sauce. Thanks for being generous. Of course. That's what I do. So this is going to be a fun day. You guys, I got around 17 minutes left. I don't know if I'll do the full 17 minutes, but I want to show you about my day. So obviously I, um, it's Valentine's day. So I, um, you know, had to give a present to my wife. It's glorious. Of course. Then I'm doing this for you guys. Then at 11 and 12, I have back to back 1004 show interviews. Then I got to drive to push comedy theater in Norfolk plug of the day to push comedy theater in Norfolk led by Sean Devereaux, the producer of my TV show, Connect, formerly known as Hampton Roads Business Weekly. And I have to do mm, about 10 segments or so there. Busy day. But if you want to be seen, if you want people to see what you're doing, you have to be helping others. You have to be creating content for others and doing it on multiple mediums. Then I'm going to go to the gym because I'm on a gym streak. I think I've gone to the gym like uh, something like every day this year except for the first day of the year because, well, you know what they say about the first day of the year. Dilly, dilly. <laughs> I've worked out 43 days in a row. It's been fun to go to the Y, get on this thing called Expresso. It's a bike. It's kind of like Peloton, but like. Well, I've never been on a Peloton, so I don't know if it's not good, but this thing's pretty cool and it tracks all my stuff. All right, enough about the gym. But I just want you guys to know, like, if you want to be seen, you have to be doing a lot. And so that's my day today, right? And then I come home and do things with my wife. I will edit videos. I will work on new stuff. I'll think about what I'm going to talk about tomorrow, you know, look at my day. And so if you want to be seen, you have to be... You can't be looking in the rear view mirror. You just have to be progressing forward. And so, you know, whether that's one piece of content today or multiple pieces, you know, do what you feel comfortable with on the mediums that you feel comfortable with while doing the things that you love. Because I'm a firm believer that you can create the life that you want while doing the things that you love to do. If you're creating content for things that you don't love and you're miserable, I was miserable when I worked in TV news. <laughs> 
yeah, start creating content on the things that you love. So, you know, many moons ago, I liked roller coasters. I still like roller coasters. But, you know, I, I go to different websites that are supporting roller coasters and amusement parks. I should have probably been one of those people who did that. And I didn't. I'm not regretting this at all. I'm just saying that I love roller coasters. So that's a thing that I could have been doing. Right. So maybe you like to, maybe you're like, um, um, you like helping families and you like helping different people be seen. Hold on. I got a sneeze coming. I think. Nope. I held it. But what do you love and what do you feel comfortable with doing? And start creating content around there. There's likely other people doing it. That's okay. Probably means that there's people searching for this, which is okay too. But the key, in my opinion, is that you have something that can help other people think about things a different way. And so I believe it was two days ago, Melody Layler said, well, I've been thinking about creating content, but other people are already doing it. I shouldn't do it then. And I actually disagree with that. I think that what you should do, and I told her this the other day, I said, I believe that you should create it because you could be pushing out content in a way that is consumed by people differently and they'll appreciate that and they'll appreciate you. So don't be afraid to be in a crowded room with people. Just figure out how to stand out. You can do that by having a championship belt, wearing a black t-shirt, having amazing hair, or just create content that everyone wants. Everyone has their own story. Exactly, Mark. One of the reasons why we started the 1004 show is that exact reason. Literally. Like, we started it because other I knew other people had stories. And a lot of people's stories don't get out. We just, I just interviewed Brittany and David Paragoff of Where to Wheel. And I sent them the preview video because the video is not out yet because we release on a Tuesday and a Thursday. I'm looking through notes. I take notes. So this is going to go out March 16th, right? Creating content a month in advance. Actually, I shot it last week, so a month and a half in advance. That's what you have to do. And then provide it in a way where people are looking for it on a repetitive way. So are people looking for Zach Miller Live every day now? If they are, guess what I'm going to have to do? Do it live every day. Or at least Monday through Friday. What questions do you guys have as I drink my rotary cup? Drink coffee. This says the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? What content are you guys thinking about writing? Feel free to share it in the comments below. If you are someone who is lost, someone who is looking to be seen, you know, comment below or hit me up in the DMs afterwards and, and let me help you through this. Let me help you figure out what you love. Because I think I know what you probably, I think you probably know what you love and that's good. So you want to make sure that you're doing stuff that you love. Lisa, what is up? Lisa, you know, loves the brewery scene, the winery scene, the food scene, and put that all together as something that originally was Taste Tidewater, similar to Andy Hilton with just the local version, but now have expanded statewide. And I think it's, I'm going to butcher this, like Taste of Virginia. But by starting small, Becoming an expert and authority in that space, you then can expand. And she's created partnerships with so many people across the state to share kind of the culinary and, and I don't know, distillery and brewery scenes and winery scenes, you know, in her backyard. And now has been able to take that everywhere. Carl Planties, what's up, man? Good to see Epic Made. Carl, I've been seeing that you guys are taking your Epic Made logo and having it seen in other places. What's the what's the idea with that? Where did you come up with that concept? Scott McJunkin, 
you guys haven't seen his episode of the 1004 show, make sure to check that out. Uh, Scott is a great dude and can really, really help you out. You guys should also check out Achievely. Bob Blackburn, former wrestler. Bob, you like my belt? Bob also lost a lot of weight. Congrats to you, my friend. Andrea, what's up? Lindsay, what's up? Ashley Clark, what's up? Mark Rowan, I already said hello to you. I'm not going to say hi to you again. You probably text me right now, too. Chris Lyons. Hey, I got my wedding ring from Chris Lyons. Woo! Thanks, buddy. Bob Simpson, Arnell. Hello, Chris Tillett. You need to get back to work, my friend. And I think that's it. I think I've said hi to everyone. Bianca, what is up? Hope you're doing well. Whew. So where do you where do you go from here? Where do you find your customers? Well, we've told you different ways to communicate with them. And honestly, the idea that you guys should be thinking about is communicating with them where they are, where they're communicating with you. Why is that such a hard thing to think about? It's not, and it shouldn't be, right? If you like CrossFit, why don't you find some CrossFit forums and create relationships with people there? You don't always have to be, and you don't always have to create that medium yourself. <laughs> what I mean by that is leverage someone else, someone else's brand. Leverage someone else's hard work and money that they've spent and show other people why your value is better than theirs or create friends with those people. It's, you know, forums, groups, conversations, they happen everywhere, right? You host a networking event. Let's say you host a networking event. You know, people are going to go there and probably create relationships with each other. You're leveraging someone else's network the same way in person as you would online. And I don't think there's anything the matter with that. I think that's what you should do, right? But you got to make sure that you can stand out and be the, be the anomaly in that case. I really appreciate you guys being with us today. If you guys are watching later and you guys have questions, you can ask a comment and we will answer them at a later time. Today, it'll probably be hours because as I told you, I have a busy day. I've got two 1004 shows to shoot back to back starting at 11 a.m. Kevin Curry is one of them and Alex Young is the other. One I know, one I don't know. So it should be a fun conversation. Then I have about a dozen or so interviews for Connect, that show formerly known as Hampton Roads Business Weekly. Again, if you want to be seen, you got to do things for people to see you. If you want, if you're looking for where to find your customers, if you're looking for places to be seen, if you're, if you're looking for a job, right? Where are those people looking? Where are the people who are hiring looking for people? You want to make sure you be there, but then also do things to stand out and look different. Someone asked a question recently. I'm getting bad uh, people who are looking, people who are applying for my jobs are bad. And I said, well, maybe it's not that they're bad. Maybe that your descriptions are bad or you're looking for people in the wrong place, right? The world has never been easier to find stuff by simple search engine searches. It's easy to find people by going and finding through groups and forums where your targets are, you are able to find the people who are asking questions, comment back, create value and help them. That's it. Let's see, earlier today, we started with this and it was fun. So I think we should do it again. What? So I'm just gonna look at these and tell you, Tumblr, so where people are writing, right? And creating images and posting images, Twitter, you know, you can search hashtags and different Twitter chats, Instagram, use your hashtags there too. And, you know, influential people who you follow, create relationships with them. Snapchat, I'm too old for this. I have no idea how to use it. I had it and deleted it. Facebook, here's one right now. Facebook Live, you can also do Facebook groups. YouTube, you know, create video content if you feel comfortable doing it. Skype, reach out to people. My next two calls for the 1004 show are gonna be on Skype. Pinterest, one of my favorite tools. You know why? Because 
my wife just sends me the things that she wants to eat. And then I go and make the recipes, right? There's content everywhere. There's people everywhere. It's you taking the time to get in front of them and create those relationships and then provide value to them. That's it. I appreciate you guys joining us today for another edition of Zach Miller Live. Some say I should have called this like Zach Miller Nation. Maybe we'll change it in the future. Maybe I'll get a logo. Maybe we'll do more than just the, you know, the, the cutout of me. Who knows? But look, this is a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys sharing this content. I appreciate you guys chiming in, communicating, liking the posts. It's been a lot of fun. Maybe I'll be back tomorrow. Who knows? But if you guys continue to have questions and you're watching this later, all you have to do is provide a little comment and I'll get back to you. Appreciate the love. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you out there. Even though I hate marketing days. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you guys soon. Woo!